You hear me? Hello. Yes. Okay. Uh, first, I will introduce uh, you and, uh, and we can start. Okay? Okay. So, uh, dear uh, Professor Dr. Alif uh, from uh, Jakarta, one of the eminent talkers and tutor in the uh, shockwave and uh, regenerative medicine. So, uh, here in Egypt and, and Middle East, you know, uh, the extracorporeal shockwave. We are using uh, some, uh, and and or less uh, in in some a lot of cases uh, such as adhesive capsulitis, tennis elbow, uh, whatever. So we have to be in depth with this uh, new era in regenerative medicine, and I know you are one of the uh, interest in the extra corporeal shock wave and and beyond. What, what, what else beyond its uh, regenerative uh, effect. So uh, need your expertise now. And uh, I share uh, this uh, Zoom on my page. Uh, and I think now uh, there is uh, uh, joining a lot of uh, our peers. So the stage with you, uh, dear Professor Arif. Okay, let's start. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Negim. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I'm uh, Dr. Arif Sumardiono. I'm a physiatrist from Indonesia, focusing on musculoskeletal sports and regenerative medicine. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Today I will just share my experience using the extracorporeal shockwave therapy uh, in the field of rehabilitation, and especially for the musculoskeletal and regenerative medicine. I believe all of you already known about shockwave and uh, uh, already performing many times with shockwave. Just so I just to remind and sharing my experience using it. Okay, so my 
talk today will be the extracorporeal shock wave therapy and its impact on rehabilitation outcome. And the outline will be regenerative rehabilitation, what are shock waves, indication and contraindication of the shock wave, shock wave mechanism of action, clinical evidence of shock wave, and please, practical. Uh, please, yeah. okay, uh, can you uh, for a screen your uh, slide? Oh. Uh, you 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 cannot see my screen. Yeah, I see, but uh, yeah. I need to slide two. Full screen. So okay. Full full screen. Okay. Yeah, full screen. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Uh... No, on on the presentation itself. Okay. Wait. Let's okay. see. Sorry. And now you can see. Yeah. You can. Yeah, you can see. It's, yeah, it's it's very good. Yeah. Okay. 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 Today I will talk about extracorporeal shock wave therapy, uh, especially on the rehabilitation medicine and re regenerative medicine. Okay. The outline will be the regenerative rehabilitation. What are shock wave indication and contraindication of shock wave? shock wave mechanism of action, clinical evidence of shock wave, practical application of shock waves, and tips and pitfalls for how to use the shock wave. So in regenerative medicine, well, we are all known about the physical medicine and rehabilitation paradigm. I, I believe that all of you mostly is a rehabilitation medicine or a doctor who deal with the rehabilitation patient. The physical medicine, the rehabilitation paradigm is promotive rehabilitation, preventive rehabilitation, curative rehabilitation, and rehabilitative rehabilitation. There is a new model of rehabilitation, which is uh, regenerative rehabilitation. It means that uh, it, uh, there is a change a bit about the rehabilitation. We, we see it, it is the, it's not only rehabilitative, but also can cure some of the diseases. Okay, so the regenerative rehabilitation actually is integrated between the re rehabilitation science, rehabilitation technology, and regenerative medicine to improve the patient outcomes. With the central goal is to restore normal function, spanning use of cell, pharmacological, and bioengineering technology, along with physical modalities and exercise. And then this is the, the paradigm, the new paradigm of the new rehabilitation is we start from care and then we go to cure now. This is the regenerative rehabilitation concept. So now what are shockwave? I believe all of you already know about shockwave, just to remind and uh, sharing my experience here. We know that extracorporeal shockwave therapy is one of the physical medicine and rehabilitation modalities which it is safe, efficient, and could give regenerative effects, not only for uh, pain relief. So what is shockwave? In physics, shockwave is a type of propagating wave that move faster than the local speed of sound in the medium like thunderstorm, explosion, earthquake, supersonic flight, etc. And the shock wave is characterized by an abrupt change of in pressure, temperature, and density of the medium, and by the energy it carries through, which dissipates relatively quickly with distance. So the shock wave from a natural phenomenon to a therapy. So this is the shock wave characteristic. We can see the shock wave. Uh, Shockwave characteristic here is there is a, a, a abrupt rise of the wave, go to the uh, peak of the wave with the pressure of 100 MPa and with the time is very short, is around five to ten nanosecond, and and then go down to the uh, uh, to the bottom also with the uh, short time. This is the characteristic of the shockwave. It's a bit deeper with other wave so what are therapeutic shock waves actually we can we know that therapeutic shock wave is divided into two intracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy and extracorporeal shock wave therapy 
and extracorporeal shockwave therapy also divided into two focus and radial and the uh, focus also divided into two uh, extra corporeal shockwave lithotripsy and focus shockwave therapy and the radial shockwave therapy the, the intracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy and the extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy are uh, using in the urology to disintegration of kidney stone and uh, in the physical medicine rehabilitation field especially for the musculoskeletal uh, medicine, we are using the focused shockwave therapy and radial shockwave therapy. So what's actually the, the shockwave, uh, the, the machine of the shockwave, we, can, we know that the shockwave divided into focus and the radial one. And this is the example of the radial one. Actually, there is a lot of uh, device could produce shockwave, and shockwave could be could be produced in many ways uh, by electromagnetic or by piezoelectric. Uh, here, I give the example. We are using the compressor. We are using the compressed air. Uh, the, the compressor is the lung of the machine of the shockwave, and then the compressed air. The precise burst of compressed air sent to the handpiece here. This is the handpiece. And inside the handpiece, there's, there is a projectile here. It will, will be back, uh, back, uh, go back and move forward and back, forward and back with a certain speed. And then in, in front of the handpiece here, we have the applicator. This is the applicator. And then the projectile will strike the internal side of the applicator. And then it will its kinetic energy is converted into the shockwave and transmitted to the targeted tissue through a specific transmission gel. This is the mechanism of the radial shockwave uh, using the compressed air. Uh, this, this is called the hand. And the compressor is, is uh, the machine itself. Okay, next we can see here in all shockwave machines, we have to know that there is the positive energy density. Positive energy density means when this, the wave is co rise in, at the peak of the wave, it's called the compression phase and it causes shear stress in tissue. And when we, the wave is go down here, it, it is the negative energy density. And in, in this phase, the shock wave will, cause, will produce the cavitation bubbles. So this is the cavitation bubble here. I will show you later with the video. So between the positive energy density and the negative energy density, we call it the total energy density. So the sum, the sum of the uh, positive and negative energy density is the total energy density. So this is the, the picture of the uh, how to show the cavitation bubble. Uh, this is the courtesy of the EMS machine, uh, Swiss dollar class machine, radial shock wave. We, this photograph is taken by the special uh, photo, special photography. We can uh, uh, take the picture very quick here. We can see there is the compression phase and here is the cavitation bubble here. Okay. So, what is the most important in the shock wave? The most important in the shock wave, which will be give the therapeutic effect, is the cavitation. So, the significant tissue effect is cavitation, consequent to the negative phase of the wave propagation. And then, cavitation. What cavi, What will be the cavitation impact? And if cavitation will give the therapeutic effect. So how to do, how to produce the good cavitation, how to produce the enough cavitation to, to, to have the uh, best therapeutic effect is here is the, the principle. The more total energy density, the more cavitation bubbles and the better therapeutic effect. So when we are using the shockwave machine, the, more, the most important is is the shockwave machine uh, produce enough cavitation to give a, a best therapeutic effect or not? And the cavitation will be depend on the total energy density. And the, to the more total energy density will produce the more cavitation buffer. And how about the focused shockwave? 
focus shock wave uh, actually uh, different with the radial shock wave uh, here uh, a bit different we, we here we also we are, we are we are using the crystal piezoelectric here uh, with the uh, with the voltage here and the voltage will trigger the crystal piezoelectric and producing the shock wave and shock wave also could produce the cavitation bubble here the positive energy density and negative energy density is the same with the radial shock wave the the, the principle here so the focus shock wave also produce the positive energy density and negative energy density with the cavitation bubbles uh, occur in the negative energy density here in the uh, and the total positive and the negative here is the total energy density. This is the picture how the cavitation bubble uh, produced by the focus shock wave. You can see here. Yeah. This is the cavitation bubble. It will produce in the mid zone here. You can see here. Okay. Okay, so what is the difference between radial shock wave with the focus shock wave actually? Uh, with the energy level also is different and then the cavitation all producing the cavitation is very important. The penetration, the radial shock wave is more shallow up to 4 cm and focus is more deep up to 8 cm. And for the usability, the radial shock wave is, is easier and treat the large areas, the focus shock with usability is medium, is have to estimate the penetration. So the focus shock wave, you have to precise, know the, where is the target, and it's better you are using the imaging modalities to guide this, the, the treatment, because it have to be precise, go to the target. Okay, this is uh, just a comparison between the shock wave device. We are know a lot of shock wave device in the market, as I mentioned in the earlier, for me, my experience, the most important is the cavitation bubble. How many cavitation bubbles which the shock wave machine can produce? And so the total energy density should be high enough to produce the cavitation bubble so we'll have the best therapeutic effect. And from the studies say that the car, the the frequency of the shock wave which will produce the therapeutic effect is between the 10 to 15 megahertz here. We can see this is the PDL, EMS, TORS, and the SIMR. Yeah, we can see here in the, in the frequency of therapeutic effect here, 15 hertz, the cavitation bubble will be produced. And which one is more producing cavitation bubble? I think that machine will be have the better therapeutic effect. Okay, and what the indication and contraindication of shock wave? This is the approved indication of the shock wave, which already um, shown by many study that for the tendinopathy, such as calcifying tendinitis of the shoulders, subacromial pain syndrome, primary long bicipital tenosynovitis, tennis elbow, golfer elbow, creator 1200 pain syndrome, patellar tendinopathy, Achilles tendinopathy, plantar fasciopathy, adhesive capsulitis, trigger point and myofascial pain syndrome, chronic muscle pain and acute muscle aches, chronic lumbar and cervical pain, superficial non-union stress fracture and osteoarthritis, slater disease, knee OA, stimulation of acupuncture point, painful exostosis such as heel spar, Hapulus deformity, proliferative connective tissue disorders, delayed union and non-union fractures, skin disease such as chronic soft tissue wounds, primary and secondary lymph lymphedema and cellulite. This is all the approved indication of the shock wave. And how about the contraindication of the shock wave and risk of the shock wave? Actually, the shock wave uh, has no absolute contraindication here. But there are some contraindicated for treatment of air filled tissue like lung, gut, etc. Treatment of pre rupture tendons, this is very important in the musculoskeletal system. So, when you want to treat the uh, tendon with the shock wave, you have to make sure that the tendon do not have full thickness 
tear or partial thickness tear. It's very dangerous. And the treatment of pregnant women, treatment of patients under the age of 18, except for Osgood's clutter disease, especially if you treat the cartilage in the patient under the age of 18, it, it, it cannot uh, use in the shock wave because it will be harm for the cartilage and chondrocyte. And treatment of patients with blood clotting disorders, including local thrombosis, treatment of patients treated with oral anticoagulant, treatment of tissue with local tumor or local bacterial or viral infection, treatment of patients with treated with cortisone, and shock wave like pain and discomfort during and after the treatment. Uh, anesthesia is not necessary here, I will talk later. Reddening of the skin, they hear swelling and numbness of the skin over the treatment area. So, how the shockwave mechanism of action? Uh, in general, proven mechanism of action of shockwave, there are two mechanisms here. First is the red chili pepper effect, and the second is the mechanotransduction. <clears throat> what is the red chili pepper effect? We know that red chili peppers contain of capsaicin, and at this first substance overwhelmed with so-called sinner fibers, sinner fibers responsible for transmitting pain, but then disable them for an extended period of time. Everybody know when we are eat chili too much, first the mouth is on fire, then it feels completely numb after that. So this is all. This is the, the principle of the red chili pepper also. Uh, the principle or the, the mechanism of action of the shockwave, how to decreasing the pain. And the research has indicated that shockwave therapy works the same way. When activated, the senior fibers release a specific substance, it's called the substance P in the tissue as well in, as in the spinal cord. And this substance is responsible for cause like discomfort during and after shockwave treatment. So uh, this is the reason why when we are treating the patient with shockwave, the patient will complaining of pain and sometime after the treatment also complaining slight discomfort. It's because we activated the sinner fibers and the sinner fibers will produce the substance. And however, with prolonged activation of the sinner fibers, uh, it become incapable for some time of releasing substance P and causing pain. So the, with, with continuing treatment with the shock wave, sinner fibers will not produce uh, substance P and the pain will be decreased as well. The less substance P in the tissue lead to reduced pain, but there is more. Less substance P also cause so-called neurogenic inflammation to decline. So substance P uh, uh, it causes the neurogenic inflammation. Decreasing substance P, decreasing pain, and decreasing neurogenic inflammation. Decreasing neurogenic inflammation may in turn foster healing together with the release of growth factor and activation of the stem cell in, in the treated tissue. This is the red chili pepper effect of the shockwave. And the second mechanism of action of the shockwave is called the mechanotransduction. What is the mechanotransduction here? Mechanotransduction is the conversion of the mechanical stimulation. Mechanical stimulation here is the shock wave. The conversion of the mechanical stimulation into the mechanochemical or into, into the many, many um, process inside the cell, like this. So it is it's called the mechanotransduction. So with this mechanism, we know that shock wave has the cellular effect or has the potency of regenerative effects. Okay, this, this is the summary, the mechanism of action of the shock wave. Molecular and cellular mechanism of the shock wave, focus or the radial is the same. It's pain relief and for healing process. So the short term goal of shock wave treatment is for pain relief and the long term goal is for the regenerative effect or for the healing process. And is caused by complex interaction between removal of neurogenic inflammation, release of growth factors, change in gene expression, new bone formation, and also activation of mesenchymal stem cell elsewhere. So this is the mechanism of action, and we can we know a lot of literature, a lot of studies already 
mentioned about the effect of the shock wave in the musculoskeletal system, like in the nerve, in the tendons, bones, muscle, and cartilage. So how about the clinical evidence of the shock wave here? <clears throat> we, we, if we want to know about the evidence base of the shock wave therapy of the musculoskeletal system, we can open, we can open the www.pedro.org.au. This is the physiotherapy evidence database or Pedro database. A lot of uh, study, uh, shock wave study in, uh, in Pedro database. We can see all here and, and all the study here is very, very good study. And when in, according to the Pedro database, when we, when using the generalized term focused shock wave therapy and radial shock wave therapy, one has to consider that there is no scientific basis for the assumption that all or most radial shock wave device or all or most focused shock wave devices respectively are comparable to each other. However, when using the generalized term of focused shock wave and radial shock wave, the studies listed in Pedro do not indicate an advantage of focused shock wave because approximately 76% of the shock wave studies in the listed in Pedro of a radial shock wave with approximately 24% of the shock wave study listed in the Pedro and this versa. So, so it is not sure what, which one is the best or which one is more advantage between focus or radial according to the many study in the Pedro database here. And far, furthermore, the studies on focus shock wave listed in the Pedro do not indicate an advantage of certain principle of generating focus shock wave because approximate relative number of study listed in the Pedro having used electromagnetic or piezoelectric shock wave 20 21%, 71%, 72% electromagnetic and 7% of piezoelectric. So, and then 75% of the studies on Radial shock wave listed in Pedro were performed in Swiss dollar class. Foremost of the radial shock wave and focused shock wave device currently used in the practice space sector, almost no or no any study has been listed in the Pedro demonstrating effectiveness of this device. This does not necessarily imply that evidence for effectiveness of this device has not been demonstrated in randomized control trial. Rather, it is possible that corresponding study have not been published or were published but do not meet the criteria for inclusion in Pedro or were published but not included in Pedro due to other reasons. That's, that's the conclusion of the clinical evidence of the shock wave in the Pedro database. And it is almost impossible to compare the energy flux density used in the study on radial shock wave list in Pedro with those used in the study on focus shock wave list in the Pedro. This is mostly due to the fact that in many studies, it was not specified whether the reported energy flux density was AFT plus or AFT total. In case one performs such a comparison, but considering whether the published data were EFT plus or EFT total, the outcome would be as follows. So this data do not support the characterization of focus shock wave as high energy shock wave therapy and radial shock wave as low energy shock wave therapy that is frequently found in the literature. That's the P2 database conclusion of the clinical evidence of shock wave. So, uh, this is some some example how uh, some example of the study how shock wave uh, mechanism of action in musculoskeletal uh, system shock wave activates lubricin genes expression shock wave has correspond to lubricin gene expansion in both low dose and high dose yes the shock wave treated tendon and also in septa. Increased lubrication expression may contribute to the beneficial effect of shock wave in providing pain and symptom relief in musculoskeletal disorders by decreasing or erosive wear. 
<coughs> lubris ini is very important in the musculoskeletal system in the tendon especially because it's, it's lubricate the tendon yeah <coughs> produce it you know, within the fascia so it's very important this is the effect of lubricin and tendon gliding so lubricin surface modification improve extrasynovial tendon gliding in canine model in vitro so if lubricin will improve the tendon gliding ability <coughs> how about the shock wave in newborn formation Ex shock wave mediated change in proliferation differentiation and gene expression of human osteoblasts shock wave have these direct dose dependent stimulatory effects on proliferation and differentiation of osteoblasts. Several genes critical for osteoblasts, differentiation and function are re regulated after shockwave application. So shockwave also uh, could have effect for the new bone formation. And how about for the union, non-union fracture? There's study here that low energy shockwave to treat lesser metatarsal fracture, non-union is case report. Uh, the successful treatment of established fracture non-union involving the base of the second metatarsal in two professional dance dancer using pneumatic low energy shock wave fracture consolidation was achieved in both case, cases with no complication and uh, an early return to activity. The overall evidence base for using low energy shock wave to treat fractures remains weak and randomized control trial comparing its to high energy is warranted. So this is shock wave for non-union fracture. And how about for calcified tendinopathy? I find many patients uh, ask me uh, whether I can integrate or other previous their previous doctors say that uh, shock wave could disintegrate the calcified calcification in the tendon so this is the the, the, the evidence base the shock wave the Meyer at 2002 found a high variability in the proportion by weight of calcium and phosphorus patient with the highest relative proportion by weight of calcium and phosphorus in the calcific deposit had a history of unsuccessful shock wave. So the authors assumed that the capacity for disintegration of calcification of the rotator calf by means of shock wave depends on its min mineral content. So, and then the goal of radial shock wave treatment of calcifying tendinitis is not to induce disintegration of the calcific deposit, but rather to achieve pain relief. And then the energy level use does not influence the frequency of resorption of the calcification. And the stage of calcified tendinopathy is also with, will determine the spontaneous resorption of calcification. So this is, the, this is very important. And how about the shockwave for chronic plantar fasciopathy? Uh, this is the first, uh, the first approved by the, uh, the first uh, effect of the shock wave, which approved by the FDA, is shock wave to, for treating the plantar fasciitis. Here, there are a lot of study, but the most important here, shock wave not only result in short-term pain relief, but in long-term treatment success as well. This is the shock wave for Achilles tendinopathy here. The, the example of the shock wave. Uh, with combined with the exercise, combined with the eccentric loading, and uh, with the treatment of the tendinopathy without shock wave only exercise loading. But the combination of the shock wave with the eccentric loading exercise is very good. And result in short term pain, not only in the short term pain really, but in long term treatment success as well. And how about shock wave for the Initial treatment of lateral or, or medial epicondylitis. This is the shock wave improved as much as the local steroid injection group as treatment for medial and lateral epicondylitis. Therefore, radial shock wave can be useful treatment option in patients for whom local steroid injection is difficult. We, we 
in the steroid injection, especially in the tendon, and for the tendon rupture is very high. And we have to know whether the tendon has the tendon seat or no. So don't inject the steroid. The shock wave also create the spasticity in the cerebral palsy. And then this is the shock wave for the knee OA. Yeah, you, yeah the study using the radial shock wave. Some of, some of my friends said, okay, shock, uh, better using the focus shock wave rather than radial shock wave because the focus shock wave uh, have the more penetration and has the more regenerative effect than radial shock wave. But as I mentioned in the earlier, the uh, radial shock wave, there is a lot of study. The radial shock wave also have uh, the regenerative effect. Not and then the second is the there is no comparison between the radial and the focus shock wave head to head. This is the radial shock wave treatment to promote the human mesenchymal stem cell and enhance the, red, the cartilage healing. And then this is the combined care treatment with shock wave and adipose derived mesenchymal stem cell. And this is the extra shock wave therapy, increased growth factor release from equine lateral rich plasma in vitro. And this is my case study. I'm using the shock wave before and after intra-articular PRP injection in knee osteoarthritis. We have five tibio femoral medial knee OA, grade three, and treated with ultrasound guided intra-articular injection with, and radial shock wave with the parameter 2,500 shock with the frequency 10 hertz four bar pressure with using the power plus handpiece treatment area around the medial to superior knee with the knee in a 30 degree of flexion. Radial shock wave was given immediate prior to PRP injection and three days after injection and continued three times in two weeks. The pain was called at baseline before intra-articular PRP and radial shock wave therapy immediate after intra-articular PRP and two weeks after intra-articular PRP injection, the pain bar score was significantly decreased immediate after intra-articular PRP and two weeks after intra-articular PRP injection and radial shock wave therapy. And shock wave also could improve blood supply, increasing vascularization. So shock wave could accelerate bone healing. And this is the study also say the shock wave is efficient and safe. This is the, I think this is the new study here in the Pedro data database as well. The shock wave is an effective, safe and non-invasive treatment option for tendon and other pathology of the muscular skeletal system. And 88.5% of the randomized control on radial shock wave and 81.5% of all radial Randomized control on focus shock wave found in Pedro had positive outcomes either regarding placebo or alternative treatment modalities. And focus shock wave do not provide better results than radial shock wave. Applying sufficient energy to the tissue can affect the treatment results. The two studies demonstrated that application of local anesthesia in the area of treatment adversely affect outcome of shock wave. It is therefore generally recommended to apply shock wave without local anesthesia to the muscular skeletal system. An optimum treatment protocol for shock wave appears to be treat treatment session at one week interval with 2,000 impulse per session and the highest energy flux density that can be applied, that's the study said. And now, how about the tips and pitfalls when we are performing the shock wave? First, the shock, we have to know the shock wave treatment parameters. I think all the shock wave machine, machine has uh, uh, in the same treatment parameters. Here is the frequency, number of shocks, intensity or power, and type or size of the handpiece of transducer. It's, it's very important because it will affect the treatment outcome as well. Uh, and then the treatment technique, we with this static or moving handpiece or transducer when we treat with shock wave, 
we should static or moving and how about the patient itself the patient remains static or dynamic with moving their extremities and the third the most important is precise diagnosis prior to shockwave application so i mean in my experience my opinion is to treat with the shockwave not based on the most painful side but we have to know the precise diagnosis and the precise diagnosis could be achieved by clinical and imaging modality examination and here, ultrasound is the most advantage imaging modalities in the musculoskeletal system because no radiation could be performed dynamic examination, relatively cheap, repeatable, no preparation, real time, and could be as guided treatment. And then what is the tips here? Set the treatment goal. What is the treatment goal of the shock wave? Is it for just for the pain relief or is it for the regenerative effects or others. So, and then ultrasound guided shock wave. We have to be using this better when uh, you, you are familiar with this ultrasound, musculoskeletal ultrasound, you can use the musculoskeletal ultrasound to, to perform the shock wave as guiding. So ultrasound is not only used for the needle guiding, but also for the shock wave and other physical modalities, you can also use ultrasound to guide the, the electro uh, therapy or, or the ultrasound diatomy or the laser, you can use the ultrasound guided. So ultrasound guided is not only for the needle, for the, for especially for physical medicine and rehabilitation doctor or, physiother or physiotherapist, ultrasound guided is not only for the needle. Okay, and especially what for the focus shock wave where we have to precise target the, the, the shock wave, we have to use in the ultrasound before performing the focus shock wave. And now, and then, and then no pain, no gain. We have to educate the patient. Yeah, no pain, no gain. So it will be painful when during the treatment and after the treatment. So, but no local anesthetic here, no analgetics, no enzymes, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs during and after the treatment. Because we have, we want to activate the senior fibers and substance P, so don't use the local anesthetic, don't use the analgetic enzymes during and after the treatment, so we can also follow up the effect of the shock wave. So don't give the, the pain relief drugs. No corticosteroids during before and after the shock wave, which is oral or injection. I prefer to, to do the shock wave after the last injection uh, with the duration of six to eight weeks after the last injection of the steroid, I will do the shock wave. But uh, before the six or eight weeks after the last injection, I will not do the shock wave. And the most important here, there is no cook book for the shock wave protocols. Every patient has different treatment protocol. Every patient has different treatment uh, codes. So there's no cookbook for the shock wave protocol. Okay, this is some of the some of the technique which I usually use in uh, for the plantar fasciitis is like this, like a patient lying prone with the feet hanging on the edge of the examination table with the towel and then I put the, the hand with these uh, parameters. And then I also uh, treat the gastroxolis muscle here. And then this is for the mid-body Achilles tendinopathy or non-insertional Achilles tendinitis here. And this is for the OA of the ankle joint and uh, using this technique. And then this is for the subtalar joint arthritis. I'm using this technique. And for the Morton neuroma, I'm using this technique. Usually, I I I, I, um, I perform the Mulder sign, and then and then with the Mulder sign, I I uh, perform the shock wave treatment in the most painful area on the upper table. Click that, hit that. I do the shock wave pre and after injection, PRP injection in the knee OA. I put the patient uh, knee like this, flex, and then I treat 
from here. This is for the Osgood classes. I performed the ultrasound first to um, make a precise diagnosis here. And then I put the top, this is the uh, shock wave. <coughs> I treat according to the, based on the ultrasound findings here. And then here is very interesting because one of the, one of the effect of the shock wave, I mentioned before that shock wave can increase the blood supply, increase the vascular cessation. This is the pre-shock wave and then immediate post-shock wave, I, I turn on the Doppler here and the Doppler was positive. It means that shock wave could increase the vascularization here. And this is another, uh, some, another example how uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound is very important before you performing shock wave. This is a 53 uh, years old female complaint of pain, swelling, and severe functional limitation of the elbows in four months ago with a vast eight swelling of the left elbow and a limited drum. From the physical examination, we cannot see there is calcification. There is a big calcification here. So sometimes we just diagnose with the tennis elbow or, or tendinitis or tendinopathy, but we don't know whether the tendon, there is a calcification or there is a tear there. So ultrasound is very important here. But if we know with the ultrasound, there's a big calcification here, we can use the shock wave more precise. Okay, this is another example of the calcific tendinopathy of the supraspinatus tendon with the ultrasound. We can know the stage of the calcification, the form of the calcification, and then we can do the shock wave more, more precise. <laughs> and this, this is another example of the shock wave uh, ultrasound in the supraspinatus full thickness tear, one of the uh, precaution when we are using shock wave is there is a pre-rupture tendon. So ultrasound very mandatory. Ultrasound is you have to use the ultrasound before the shock wave is because like this, if you, there is a full thickness tear here, you cannot see with sometimes you cannot see with the physical examination only. So you need the ultrasound or MR. So if so you just palpate, you just based on the palpation where it's the most painful site to treat with the shock wave, you will miss the pathology. You will miss the pathology here. Okay, this is another another example of the right lateral uh, uh, ITP tear here. Yeah, there is a, I, this is a iliotibial band. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh... Okay, uh, let me salute uh, your uh, presentation, uh, dear Professor Arif. This is amazing. And in myself, I don't use uh, any more uh, the extracorporeal shock, but I think I will buy the device and will try this amazing result. So let me ask uh, some question. Uh, first, in my country here in Egypt, some of the rehabilitation use for the extracorporeal shock is the uh, cerebral palsy or the spastic muscle or the stiff muscles. Uh, so yeah. is, is there an evidence for the use of extracorporeal shock on the actin and myosin or the sarcomere or what, 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 uh, what, what's happening? In fact, uh, in any in, in studies, any papers uh, that clear this, or still under uh, study? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, I haven't read the study about the effect of the shockwave, or I mean the exact mechanism of the shockwave for in acting medicine or in the, in the, in the muscle, but uh, for the spasticity, there's a lot of study using the shockwave for the spasticity, but I, I haven't read the study for, for the, the effect, the exact effect of uh, or the, uh, how, how the shock wave pathway mechanism in the muscle pathology. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second questions. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I can relay upon the uh, imaging of the ultrasonography pre and post. And also we can focus in when we apply the extracorporeal shock uh, specifically on this 
uh, muscle tear area or uh, pre-insertional or at insertional area of the yeah. tendons and etc. So what about the use of the chalk wave in uh, scarf? In scarf? Yeah. Yes. Shock wave also, uh, in, in my experience, shock wave also will have a good result in scar. And because uh, there's a study for using shock wave for cellulite, also for scar, for the hypertrophic scar. And I have experienced two patients yeah, with the scar, and I treat the shock wave for 10 times. And, and then I, I, uh, I follow up the patient and the scar is, is uh, thin, more thin, and uh, is better before, before the treatment. Okay. Uh, after uh, we using extracorporeal shock, yeah. can you get me a proper timing to start exercise? Can you start uh, after uh, extracorporeal shock uh, sessions or still waiting uh, some two or three days? Uh, sorry, uh, you, you mean after the treatment and then? After, after application of the chalk wave. On, yeah. On, let me say, in Achilles tendinopathy. So I yeah. start early after the chalk wave setting. The exercise or just okay. wait? Okay. Okay. We can, uh, we can uh, start the exercise uh, one day after the shock wave treatment. Is, is, is no problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, I thank you for uh, your valuable time, uh, dear Professor. Ad. Let me uh, great uh, hug and great uh, thank uh, and goodbye, uh, dear Professor. Okay. Thank you very much, Doctor. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.